This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Wayne Mitchell. Uh, I have the privilege for at least a couple of more months of uh, being the president and CEO of the Nacogdoches County Chamber. I want to welcome you folks uh, to the call this morning. Uh, I do want to remind you that members of the media have been invited to participate in this call as well. And I'd ask you respectfully to put your phones on mute and hold your questions until our, you know, until the folks presenting uh, uh, conclude their remarks this morning. Uh, and uh, these, uh, this call will be posted later today on the Chamber's YouTube website. So if you have colleagues that uh, missed the call but would like to be a part of it, we certainly would uh, invite you to, uh, to participate. So with that in mind, uh, today is what I call, uh, uh, it's, it, it's called the Open Mic Day, and we're going to allow everybody uh, on the call that would like to speak uh, some amount of time to report. Uh, I ask you to try to keep your, confine your remarks to five minutes or less. And with that in mind, I do see we're fortunate to have the interim city manager, Keith Kipling, here on, uh, uh, on on the line this morning, we'll have him lead off and tell us what's going on. All things Nacogdoches. Well, if you'll if you'll look behind me, you'll see the toter in the uh, corner of the office. Uh, I'm cleaning out, getting ready for Rick Beverlin to start next Thursday. I'm very excited about that. Um, Rick has found a, a house to rent, and he's excited about getting to Nacogdoches and getting uh, getting started. Um, and so we're spending a lot of time and energy right now getting ready. Uh, for that transition to happen. Um, the plan is for me to help him transition for the month of November, and then uh, I'm going to be retiring at the first of the year. So uh, I'll be uh, retiring from the city, and after 35 years of, of doing this, I'll figure out what's next. Um, I fully intend to fail at retirement, um, so I'm going to take a little time off and take a little break, and then we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, we are, uh, the city, we're working really hard with NEDCO to try to figure out some answers about housing. Uh, we all have been talking about for a couple of years, the lack of single family housing. Um, and <clears throat> our realtors are really, really beating us up because we just don't have enough housing. And so we're really working hard to try to find uh, some solutions here at City Hall and with our partners at NEDCO. Um, I wanna invite everybody to come out next Tuesday night to the police department's second annual trunk or treat event. Um, the dispatchers decided a couple of a year or two ago that they wanted to do this and they put it together on their own. And, and that event is, uh, is, is great fun uh, for Halloween. Um, and that's all I have. That's great. Well, first of all, I do want to take a moment and thank you for your service to the city and filling in uh, unbelievably capably uh, during this period of transition here, Keith. Uh, uh, you did great work in, in, in uh, uh, the fire department and, and, and uh, EMS, and uh, we couldn't have had a better person. And I'll be joining you in January in the retirement thing. Maybe we can form an S corporation and get something going. So another new chamber member. There you go. So, but thank you. Any questions of uh, of, of the city manager? Well, Keith, thank you very much. I appreciate that, sir. I'm pleased to see we have uh, Dr. Smith, Lorenzo Smith, on the line. Uh, anything exciting going on, Dr. Smith, at SFA? I'm sure it is. Well, there's, there's always something exciting on campus, uh, Wayne. Uh, just filling in for President Oglesby, lots of good news. First of all, we had, as you know, we've affiliated with the University of Texas system, and one little small part of um, some work that we had to do is kind of um, get our, our uh, SACS accreditation agency uh, to to be on board and do their final um, analysis. And so last week they were here and they engaged us on many different levels, just double checking, making sure that we have all of our T's crossed and dot and, um, and I's dotted. And uh, we, we really came out with a clean bill of health and uh, everything is, is moving forward. Um, it was something that we expected, but it's always nice to get it formally, uh, get that formal notification from um, from our accrediting body. So that's really good news. Homecoming, of course, happened. Uh, we had that recently. Lots of things going on on campus. Uh, our Alumni Association was very successful in some fundraising. I participated in that. And um, I would just say the one area that uh, SFA is working uh, particularly hard on is our uh, working with our strategic enrollment management um, uh, process. Uh, Lee Furbeck, Vice President Lee Furbeck, 
uh, under the guidance of President Oglesby, has been really rallying the troops and coming up with um, a plan for how we're going to manage our enrollment and, 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 and in fact, grow our enrollment, which is so essential for the, the health of the institution. So lots of things going on. That's great. Any questions of Dr. Smith? Well, again, uh, it looked like it was, uh, in spite of the game, it was a great homecoming celebration locally here. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, it, it was uh, great to see so many folks uh, in the stores and restaurants in town here. It really, it really was economic catalyst. So thank you for that. I yeah. appreciate that. Uh, mm -hmm. I do see that we have Caroline Garner from Nacogdoches Area United Way Online. Good morning, Caroline. Good morning, Wayne. Um, glad to see all of you this morning and looking forward to that S Corp that you guys have all. I'll be staying tuned for that. <laughs> that should be interesting and fun. Um, we have a lot going on at United Way. I was talking with Kelly this morning. We, we, this is just a really busy time for United Way because we have two big events coming up this fall in addition to our fundraising campaign to support our agencies next year. Our first camp. Uh, excuse me, our first event that is coming up is on Thanksgiving morning. That is our annual turkey trot. This will be our 14th annual turkey trot. Um, we have with us our event coordinator, <laughs> Kelly Augustine, is our event coordinator. She goes, yes, shout out Kelly. She's doing a great job of pulling this, this year's event together. This is sponsored by Pilgrims Forest. It was invented by Pilgrims Forest 14 years ago. Um, it's a fantastic way to start, fantastic way to start your holiday on your own with your family and friends earn those turkey points early you can start training right now or you can just come out and walk with us that morning we have a kids k that is sponsored by jc's so anybody 10 and under can come out and uh, we have uh, a special character one of our board members has dressed as an inflatable turkey a <laughs> giant turkey in the past to make it fun for the kids and he says something maybe a little different this year so we're excited to see what that's going to be but super fun they do a 1k around the park and they get shirt in the middle free of charge to all kids sponsored by JC. Then that's at eight in the morning, 8.30, kicks off the 5K. It's a very scenic route, heading out of Pecan Park, going south and wrapping back through behind Memorial, down Gay, through the, through the SFA campus, and then turning to go through Tucker Woods and coming back to the park. Super fun. So plan to join us for the Turkey Trot, um, and you can register online for that. Um, uh, we also have the Christmas Parade. That's another fine United Way event that is coming up 10 days or nine days after the turkey trot on December 2nd, always the first Saturday. It, it steps off at 6.30. New this year is an adjusted route because of the fantastic work the city is doing to improve our drainage. Um, that affects some of the streets that we normally use for the lineup and the disperse, disbursement of the parade at the end. So um, it'll still go downtown from the TJR area. Then it'll go downhill from downtown <clears throat> to go around Festival Park because it's going around Festival Park we are going to have a party in the park for the parade, which is <laughs> a lot of peas. But anyway, um, and there will be bathrooms. Speaking of, that was all color. But anyway, excuse me. So we are having vendors in the park. And then the CBB also is sponsoring a, a musical act, a concert there in the park after the parade. So it's just going to be a really fun evening for the family. Um, and our, we have the theme this year is um, Christmas around the world. And our, we are ready to announce that our, um, our, oh, you know, the one who leads the parade, Elf, um, our one who leads the parade. <laughs> oh, Grand Marshall. Can, hmm, hello, who's helping me? Grand Marshall. Grand Marshall, thank you. Gary Lee former Grand Marshall. Grand Marshall. That's where yeah, I that hurt was my our back. <laughs> I'll counsel you the next round. Thank you, thank you. That was our 2023 Grand Marshal. Our 20, 2022 Grand Marshal. Our 2023 Grand Marshal will be Miss Betty Shin, who's been on our United Way board for more years than we can count. Just she's a wonderful member of the community and United Way board. Um, yeah, so that's it for now for events coming up imminently. Then we are doing our annual fundraising campaign. We welcome new partners. We have a couple of new partners joining us this year, and that means we just come and tell your employees or your group about United Way how we support 19 local partner agencies in the areas of health, education, and financial stability. We welcome any donation, any amount. Learn more at unitedwaynac.org. Rex Perry has donated the campaign car. It's a beautiful Hyundai Elantra, and one lucky donor 
who donates at the My Fair Share, a one hour pay per month or more, will win that car. So we're very excited about that. Um, but that's underway, and I'm glad to talk to you about it. It's a no pressure thing. We're just glad to um, uh, inform on how you can support some of these wonderful agencies in the community. Um, and we did do a tour. You'll be seeing online some pictures of our presentations of our allocations grants, our grants that we are promising to these agencies for 2024, for which we are fundraising. We've been going around with, with our big check and having some photo, photo moments with them. And so um, you'll see that come out on media. One of those agencies is hosting an event. Try to advocate for agencies. This, um, this is Solid Foundation Flyer. They're having their lights on after school on November 2nd out at Casa, featuring two-time Super Bowl champion Ty Warren. Um, so uh, you can ask me more about that or um, look, uh, look at Solid Foundation's website or Facebook page to learn more about that. That's all I got, Wayne. I hope I stuck to five minutes. Caroline, I appreciate that that report. Any questions, Carol? Uh, everything looks like the turkey trot, the Christmas parade are underway, so we're going to have a lot of fun. I do want to give, uh, sadly, uh, Ashley Morgan, the director of Visit Nacogdoches, couldn't be with us today, but she was kind enough to send me a report, and it, it is as following. It's been a busy month uh, in Nacogdoches ho hotel occupancy. 58.9% for the month of September, a 16.3 increase from September 2022. And overall hotel occupancy is up 14.9% for the year. So we're doing pretty good at getting heads in beds uh, uh, along the way. Uh, Visit Nacogdoches is excited to work with United Way on the Nine Flags Christmas Parade and Festival. This year, the new parade route, uh, as Caroline indicated, and they'll have some fun announcements in the coming weeks. This week, the De Texas Downtown Conference is here in Nacogdoches. The conference takes place from Tuesday, uh, October 24th, which is today, to Friday, October 27th. They're expecting 300 professionals in the downtown Main Street and tourism uh, industry here to visit us. We're excited to work with Nacogdoches Main Street to show off our incredible downtown district. Uh, the chamber, by the way, will be making a presentation along with other organizations tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I've been uh, uh, invited to, to give a five minute presentation several times during the course of the day. Um, the one, uh, this one, likely, she says, uh, Ashley says this one likely will be covered uh, by Kelly's report, but just wanted to reiterate that we'll be re attending the ribbon cutting for the reopening of the old university building, which will be at 10 a.m. on this Friday, October 27th. And I hope everybody will attend that. That's a beautiful historic facility here in Nacogdoches. And to see continued investment in the upkeep and modernization of that building is wonderful. So thank you, Ashley, for, for providing that report. I do see that we have Les Linebarger and Aaron Windham online. Uh, I bet there's a lot going on in the NASD. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, yes, uh, there is a lot going on. We're nearly 10 weeks into the current school year, so things have really settled into their routine. Uh, but just like uh, at SFA, there's always something going on on our campuses. Uh, just a few days ago, Aaron and I were at TJR Elementary to observe a uh, escape room math exercise in Emily Drury's classroom. It was just a great reminder of the work that our students and our teachers put in on a daily basis. These students were so engaged, solving math problems and, and most likely learning and not even realizing they were learning at the time. It was that much fun. I, I mean, it made me completely reconsider my thoughts on math class from back when I was a student. But it was just a reminder of the of what's taking place at all of our campuses. And, and Aaron can mention this as well. We were there also uh, because a, an NISD Education Foundation grant had uh, provided some of the money for Ms. Drury to be able to have that uh, special exercise in her classroom. So we were really proud to see that. Um, this time of year, we're in the middle of football season, but it's also in you know, high schools across the state, it's marching band season. 
And our Golden Dragon Marching Band is performing this afternoon at 2.45 p.m. at the State Military Marching Band Contest at McLean Stadium at Baylor University down in Waco. Now, earlier this month, the band earned its 43rd straight first division rating at the regional contest that was actually took place here at uh, Homer Bryce Stadium at SFA. And we're proud of what Jacob Weems has come in and done as a director. He's kept things going. Uh, obviously, 43 straight first division ratings. There's been a whole lot of people, a whole lot of students, and a whole lot of band directors play a role in that. But Jacob, who's himself an alumnus of uh, the band program at Nacogdoches High School. He has done great work and we're really proud of what they're doing. Um, I'm going to turn some things over to Erin that she's going to talk about with the foundation and some other things that we're involved with. Hey guys, thanks Les. Um, as Les mentioned, we visited an extraordinary math uh, teacher, Ms. Drury over at TJR, who did some really cool things with uh, a grant from our education foundation and those type of things are made possible because of community support and employee support so the cool thing that happened this year this is year two with our foundation our employees alone gave in over thirty thousand dollars to support these grants which is incredible for an organization to give back into its own foundation and support their own things and also the community has given and we are in the midst of that campaign still um, also the coolest was uh, downtown which is the uh, will be they'll be recognized that old town rig down uh, looks like they've won the people's choice award for the texas downtown association and that event donated fifty thousand dollars to our education foundation so that's just an incredible uh everything coming full circle uh for community events and giving back uh super cool uh in addition to that our foundation is calling for grants in the spring that will give larger grants to teachers to do innovative things in the classroom we've had some really neat asks happening right now as our grants are open for many grants and can't wait to post more of what's happening in the classroom with those grants um, to step away from NISD or in addition to NISD news is our education committee for the chamber. Lock crew, our leaders of tomorrow, eighth graders are going strong. They had a great visit at um, Lamplight and the Fine Arts Building at SFA. It was incredible and our community partners are great helping us with that. Um, the kids got to meet some cool people and do some really cool things and so uh, they're well on their way to being leaders here in our community. Uh, another great thing that we're working on here at, at our, the school district in combination with the Education, Foundation, Education Committee is Gateway to Your Future, which is the hands-on career experience. We're really excited that the city is going to partner with us also and we'll have fire, police, and some city trades at that experience, January 10th and 11th. We're still open to industry partners, whoever wants to kind of display their, um, give the eighth graders and high school this year an ex hands-on experience with your career. Uh, reach out to me and let me know and we'll get you plugged in and get feed you some more employees out of our um, school districts here locally. Thank you, Aaron, and thanks for you and all your committees and all they're doing. It's uh, it's exciting stuff. So, any questions of Aaron or Les? Well, thank you both. It's great to see those schoolyards uh, so busy and active. And Les, I believe the the high school teams already won more games than it than uh, twice as many games as they won last year. So, uh, we're on a road to success with that football program. Hey, I'm, I'm really proud of what they've done this year in the football program. And I, I guarantee you, if you asked our new coach, Darby House, if he wanted, if this is how he expected it to go, he'd say, absolutely not. I wanted more wins. But I, I'm at the home games, I'll be down on the sidelines getting photos. And I've done that for years in my previous life. And I know what a, um, I know what a well-run program looks like from the sideline and uh, it's it's a good atmosphere down there and we're, we are we're really proud of what they've done this year 
Well, you should be. Well, thank you, both you and Aaron and, and the entire staff. Uh, I do see we're fortunate to have with us uh, from the SBDC, Cassandra Stokes has been very business busy with the business development program. Cassandra, anything to report on your end? Uh, Cassandra, we're not hearing your, your mic apparently for some reason. No, apparently we're not coming through on that, Cassandra. I apologize. All right. Well, we'll get an update from you. And if you feel free to, to post any urgent messages in the chat section, Cassandra, thank you for being with us. I'm pleased to see we have uh, uh, two versions of Gary Lee Stokes, uh, Gary Lee Ashcraft uh, on, the, on the phone this morning. Uh, I'll take the one that's face on. Good morning, Gary Lee. What's going on with you? You're welcome. I, uh, always going to echo now. That's really great. I uh, have a uh, two uh, machines running because one I can't hear and one I can hear. Uh, so I'm going to need to get uh, my IT Gordon Reynolds back over here and redo this thing. There that is. Uh, Sawmill Six Man is what I report on. We uh, the the guys, the basketball team is fired up. Uh, they've been in uh, some pregame situations that aren't open to the public. Uh, they played rice and uh, uh, handled it. Uh, they they uh, basically beat them. They beat them. And they're on their way to some other games before they open up on November 9th. And they open up against uh, the Northwestern Business School in Houston. Uh, no, I don't know what that is, and they don't either. But uh, this Sunday night, you all are invited. Anybody may attend, and we'd love to have you to Bar Keeps. Uh, Bar Keeps is shutting down, and we're having our uh, pre basketball season uh, event. Uh, kind of uh, come meet the Lumberjack basketball team. There will be food. Uh, uh, the bar is an open bar. Uh, the uh, players and the coaches will be your servers. And it's a real good. Uh, chance to, to interact with the team. The guys are wonderful. Uh, we had them at homecoming every which way. They were putting up the bonfire, helping out there, helping us uh, meeting people uh, around, signing uh, uh, flyers of the team and meeting people and kids around the tailgate this uh, past weekend. Uh, I, hope, I hope some of y'all might come. It's a $50 ticket. Uh, there are raffle prizes. Uh, uh, Kenny Rena just gave me one this morning. It's a beautiful Pampered Chef uh, uh, grape uh, that we're going to be uh, offering for the raffle. And we've got some other things. I'll try to get Rex Perry to give us a car. Carolyn, I don't think he's going to give Sawmill Six Man a car, but maybe I can get a you know a little meal thing or something like that. Anyway, uh, come on out if you want to. Axe and Jacks, again, the first game, home game, is November 9th. Look out for this team. We expect that they'll win the whack. They're really that good. It's uh, a good bunch of guys. And I guess that's all I have to report, Wayne, unless you just want to hear some stories or something. Well, again, thank you, Gary Lee. I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, several of those young men in that program. And uh, you're absolutely right. They're impressive. Uh, uh, and uh, I have great hopes for the for the 2023-24 season this year. That's uh, a ticket well worth buying. I, I, I totally agree. Any questions, Gary Lee? If not, I'm going to now introduce the Chief Operating Officer of the Nacogdoches County Chamber of Commerce, my distinguished colleague, Kelly Augustine. Good morning, Kelly. Well, good morning, Wayne. Good morning, everyone. Uh, great timing, too. I had just copied and pasted the link to our Chamber-focused online event calendar. You can also play around with the search fields and see all our community events that are posted on that calendar, too. Uh, I'm sure you're checking that daily. And I want to thank our education chair, Erin Windham, for giving that great update on those programs. Um, Ashley Morgan for mentioning the ribbon cutting on Friday at 10 with the old university building. But before that, we actually have a ribbon cutting on Thursday here at the chamber office with a new Nacogdoches business, also servicing the Lufkin area. I'm sure he would travel to other East Texas areas. And that is Mr. Jim Huddleston with Progressive Materials Technology. 
So we're going to hear more about an innovative company. Uh, he was in our board meeting for a couple of minutes as a sponsor this morning, and he has an interesting background um, and interesting plans for what his time here in Nacogdoches. So please join us at the ribbon cutting on Thursday, 4.30 here at the chamber. And looking ahead, um, I'm sure Cassandra was going to mention a wonderful business development series seminar that we have planned for our members and other businesses here in Nacogdoches area. Uh, Cassandra, I'm going to keep talking, but if your mic is working, feel free to interrupt me. This is going to happen on November 14th. It's free of charge, but we would like to have your reservation so we know how to set the room. We're going to be holding this thanks to uh, the city's rec center allowing us to use their big meeting room there on North Street. So we'll be at that location and the meeting starts at 1130. We have a representative from Austin coming to tell us about a statewide program called Historically Underutilized Business Program. We refer to it as HUB and uh, this is something that would be open for minority-owned, woman-owned, veteran-owned, and I may not have touched on all the owned keywords there, but it's certainly something that a business owner would want to check into to see if it would be good for them to be HUB certified. And this representative from Austin will be able to tell us more about that and answer questions and go through the process uh, in a way that will help our businesses get uh, plugged in so that they can get more work, grow their business through these state programs. So please, um, if you have questions, let us know about that. Uh, we are not having an eggs and issues this month, but look for more coming up in November, as well as an Alive After Five with Elite Medical Home Care that'll be happening on November 16th. Um, another ribbon cutting celebration will be with XLER. I believe this that company is under new ownership and they want to get to know the community better. So please look for that on the calendar too. Wayne, I know you have more conference calls coming up. I know we have more uh, activities with other programs, but I'm going to leave it at that and just remind everyone to keep checking our online calendar or when you come to our chamber events, you'll hear more about what we're up to. Thank you, Kelly. And I do want to call all of your attention to the chat section here. We've got several very important messages that I respectfully suggest you take a peek at there as well. I do want to let you folks know that, uh, as you know, the, there is a bond package uh, being considered, I believe, in November, uh, which will be on November 7th. Uh, and the chamber uh, staff surveyed the membership, and of those responding, uh, about 80% voted in favor, voted to, to support the entire package. So with that in mind, the chamber this, the chamber board this morning uh, officially uh, voted to, to urge our membership and the community to support that entire bond package. Uh, again, the chamber membership responding 80% in favor uh, of the uh, entire question. So that's, uh, uh, we'll be communicating that publicly uh, uh, very shortly that the board has voted in favor of it. So, uh, but uh, there are, I do want to thank all of you folks. If anybody has anything to add, this would be the time to unmute your uh, your microphone and you can make whatever announcement you want. Hey, Darla, Wayne. Go ahead, Darla. Um, yes. Um, hey, everybody that doesn't, I mean, I'm Darla O'Neill with the Salvation Army here in Nacogdoches, and I just wanted to, uh, give a quick update. Um, I know it's kind of early for most everyone else, but around here it's starting to look a little Christmassy. Um, we're gearing up for our Christmas season. Um, I just want to let y'all know November the 8th at 10 a.m. at Eubank, we'll be kicking off our Angel Tree, um, which is where uh, we register folks who may need help buying gifts for their children or for seniors over 65. Um, and we'll be putting the tree up at Eubank and kicking off. Um, you pick an angel off the tree, buy the gifts, and return them to us. 
we'll be distributing them before Christmas. And then another exciting thing is November the 18th is our Red Kettle kickoff event. Uh, it is from one to three at Brookshire Brothers on University Drive. This is where our mayor and Lufkin's mayor challenge, challenge each other for those two hours um, to see who can raise the most money. Uh, last year, Nacogdoches won. Um, and then uh, we will have the Salvation Army Band there playing some Christmas carols. And um, once again, that's November the 18th from one to three. And then we're always looking for volunteers to help ring those bells at the kettles um, that starts on the Friday after Thanksgiving and runs through December 23rd. And you can go to register to ring.com to register or just give me a call here at the office and I can walk you through the process. That's great, Darla. I had the pleasure of ringing the bell, uh, I believe, up at uh, maybe Walmart uh, a year or so ago. It was a, a, a really fun uh, uh, way to spend the afternoon and hopefully productive for the Salvation Army. So I'd encourage everybody to do it. So that's okay. great. Dr. Smith, did you have something to add? I did. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Wayne, with whom can I speak regarding um, just understanding a little bit more about the barriers in this in the the city with respect to um, single family uh, homes? I I I could learn a little bit more about that, uh, what some of those barriers are, and also uh, for many of our students, as you know, we would love for them to stay here right here in Nacogdoches after they graduate, and I'm interested in learning more about what the city can do in terms of development, housing, community um, uh, type of um, attractions to help make them want to stay here. So who would be the best person to talk to about that? Well, first of all, uh, certainly the, time, the chamber certainly has the same interest as you do. So the chamber would be a good place to start along with our partners at NEDCO. Uh, I know this has been a long time uh, uh, initiative for, for Larissa and uh, and the NEDCO board as well, which many of us on this call are members of. Uh, and, uh, you know, housing is a critical issue to organizations like United Way. I don't want to speak for Caroline, but uh, it, we all are concerned about, well, student retention. So many of our businesses locally here are, are owned by former graduates of SFA, and we'd like to see that continue to grow, that trend to continue to grow. And, and uh, it's just good for all of us. So. Uh, why don't we uh, have a conversation, uh, uh, Dr. Smith? And uh, uh, and uh, the other thing is that uh, the other vehicle would be uh, Kelly, uh, the SFA Chamber Connection. That might be something that you folks could kick around as well. Uh, but let's talk about that, uh, Dr. Smith, uh, and uh, and see if we can you know, if we can make some progress in there. That's great. Very good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other announcements? Well, listen, folks, I want to thank you all. Uh, this was an expedited call, but a very important call today. Uh, lots of uh, interesting news and, uh, and a, lot of, a lot of exciting things going on. Uh, again, I call your attention to the chat section, which uh, we'll leave up. Uh, and uh, Kelly will probably have a copy of it on the, on the website as well. But again, I hope you folks have a happy and prosperous day. And I thank all of you for joining us. Uh, this concludes the call.